Hey guys, thank you for checking out this episode. We'd love your support by heading to patreon.com forward slash freshly grounded. It really does make a difference in helping us continue making this content. And if not, no stress. Enjoy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome. Look, we're back in stock with the Freshly Grounded game. The studio is absolute mess. The cards about to fall all over the place. And my throat is absolutely mash up. Don't worry. Alhamdulillah, I don't have COVID symptoms. Um, with that being said, I was just quickly recording the intro for this episode. Uh, but everything is an absolute mess. So basically, their cards are back in stock, as you can see. Uh, Alhamdulillah, they came back in stock last night as of my recording this intro. And you guys are going crazy. Alhamdulillah, like showing so much love. They're already... Um, I don't, how many of them have sold out? Like, I think we only have like a hundred and, and something left. Like, we've we've sold out so many so fast. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so, at the time of listening to this, if they are still in stock, grab yours now at freshlygrounded.com forward slash. Uh, no, the link is in the description and it's in our Instagram bio and stuff. Uh, but go, go grab them at freshlygrounded.com or Google freshly grounded game and um, yeah, grab yourself a pack of our card game. And genuinely, guys. I don't know if you've seen the comments on, on how people have interacted with it or how people have experienced the people's experience with them since they got the game, those who've already bought them. Man, what's happening to me today? I don't know if you've seen the comments about the game, but they've really created great experiences for people. People have said that, um, I remember this one sister, she said that um, her and her friends thought they knew everything about each other after 10 years of like friendship and they were literally up all night playing the game and they learned so much about each other and that's what this game is about man, it's deepening your relationship with your uh, friends, your spouses, your children, your parents. Um, it, there's, there's like hard hitting questions that I suppose you would only you'd never really ask each other and it makes you think deeply and it makes you give a deep answer and it allows you to be vulnerable. Uh, it's great for uh, traveling, uh, great for if you're getting, a, uh, great for a date night um, or generally just you're having a, a, a night in and you just want to not have technology around, you know, and just have a deep conversation. That's the thing that I love about Freshly Grounded is it's allowed me to have conversations with people without any any kind of phones or anything like that. And 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 we wanted to kind of replicate that in some way and, and give you guys, you know, an amazing conversation. Uh, so check them out at freshlygrounded.com. Other than that, this is an amazing episode with Jody McIntyre. Jody is a uh, real proponent of uh, the... Uh, rights of disabled people. Um, Jody has cerebral palsy and um, he's done an entire episode on his own feed about kind of his journey. And so um, I just wanted to have a, uh, have a good old natter with Jody. So um, if you want to hear his story, uh, this is not the episode. Uh, you would probably want to listen to his story on elsewhere on many other platforms. But if you want to ha- hear two brothers having a lovely little chin wag, then this is the episode for you. And please do check the link uh, links in our bios, in our description, guys, for like all of the different things we're supporting and all the different things we're doing, such as the charities we're supporting right now. And if you want to give some sadaqah and do some great deeds, you can do that. Or if you want a free audio book, we've got a link in there. We've got all sorts of links in our description that will benefit both you and us uh, if you go ahead and click on them. With no, without, with that being said. We've got to carry on packaging these orders. So we'll see you guys soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Enjoy this episode. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Jody. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Mr. Chowdhury. Indeed. You know, funny thing. What? <laughs> someone someone uh, missed it, my name for Chowdhury once. Mackie uh, Not my, my first name. Oh. I was being int- introduced to a teach, teacher in one of the massage t- in Birmingham. And the brother said, oh, this, this is uh, Brother Jody. And he said, Chowdhury, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> That's quite a stretch. You know, I always, I've always had this in my life. I've always been like, um, 
mistaken for different nationalities. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, thank you very much. No. <laughs> It wasn't like, a compliment or... or uh, it's, too, it's too early in the morning for that, okay, mate? <laughs> it wasn't even a compliment. <laughs> Listen, man, this is Saturday, mate. It's, yeah, it's, it's calm down, mate. All right, fine. No, no, honestly, I remember when I was younger, one example, I was travelling in uh, South America. I was getting a bus from Argentina to Brazil. 36-hour bus ride. And someone sitting next to me said, Oh, are you from Argentina or pa- Paraguay? Oh, did he even give any? <laughs> That's it. There's there's the multiple choice. <laughs> multiple choice. The two <laughs> options. You know, I think it's often about the context of where you are. So, what, whatever the uh, prevalent minority is in that place. So, I, I spent some time living in Venezuela, me and my younger brother, and there's a lot of Lebanese in Venezuela. So everyone thought, well, well we, we actually are, are one eight Lebanese from my great grandmother, but people called us like, oh, the Lebanese guy. Should hang, hang on to that one eight. <laughs> but I, sometimes I exaggerate. <laughs> yeah. I've never understood it because uh, sometimes, like, I remember, like, like, in uni or in school and stuff, people would ask, like, where people are from, mm. and someone would respond, like, oh, I'm like one eighth this and one sixteenth this. And, I'm just it's ridiculous. Man. It's ridiculous. There's no yeah. way. I suppose if it's your truth, it's your truth. But I've just never known that much information about myself. Like I'm like my mum and dad are Pakistani. But I'll tell you what, one thing on this topic actually is I think before I was practicing, right, people would assume different um nationalities of me sometimes. I think everybody goes through it at some point. Like some someone will say, like, if you if you tell some if you ask someone, what do you think my nationality is, eventually someone will get it wrong. And uh because it, when I speak to most people now, they're like, you look very Pakistani there is, yeah. there's, there's no, nothing else that you look um, but I remember like if people mis- mistook my identity I would never be like I, it, you know, do you know, it, I would never be offended in fact it would feel like a compliment that. right yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, when I started practicing I, I, I went through this I actually like the, the, the phases that I went through is before I before Allah like guided me to the haq in that way mm. it's like he prepared me by going through like six months to a year of going through this transition of realizing that if you c- if you are content with who you are as yourself um that's the way to achieve happiness right nice. and um and it's not fun lying or being happy with no i'm mean, not saying lying i'm not talking about the nationality thing i'm talking about like I, I often give the analogy of like buying, I, I I bought a jumper from Primark once and I remember being embarrassed to say that it was from Primark okay. and I, it was around that transition um, mm. that I started being like proud of it. Like, so if someone would be like, oh, nice jumper, I'd be like, bro, 10 quid in Primark lasted me two years. You have to get one. And it changed. Yeah. And I, it felt so much, I felt so much happier. And mm. then I realized that also a lot of people go through this identity crisis because um, uh, I think growing up, uh, the word Pakistan if, if someone wanted to bully you, they'd call you a Paki. And mm. therefore, the connotation is, if someone thinks you're Pakistani, you don't want to have to deal with that. And you've, that because of that, you've now built in your own perception that Pakistani is like a bit like looked down upon. So you're a bit almost complimented when someone doesn't think that you're Pakistani. Mm. And so I went through, when I went through this transition, I also went through the transition of like being so proud of you know what Allah's created me and uh, created us in tribes and uh, from different areas of the of mm. the planet and I'm so happy and proud of my heritage and my culture and there's so many beautiful things about my culture that we should celebrate that I used to be like oh no that's not me and it's just it's such a jahil mindset you know what you're saying about the nationality being used as an insult right it's actually something really sad when mm. i when i look back at uh i grew up in london when i was going to school i i can remember that um the the black kids in our year would use somali as an insult mm. so none of them were somali they're from different backgrounds uh you know all of them born in the uk but different backgrounds and if they wanted to like cast someone and insult them and say, "Oh, you're Somali," I never understood. I, I, I didn't know any Somalis. I didn't know anything about Somali, and I, oh, I genuinely didn't know. I, I didn't um understand the reference. Like I didn't understand 
Oh, that, well, I didn't get it, basically. And now, years later, you realise that at that time, Somalis were like the newest kind of wave of uh, migrants to the UK because of, mainly because of civil war and poverty, you could say. And it, like, it's so, it's so, like, horrible. Like, mm. like people that are, you know, f fleeing another part of the world because of real hardship and and uh, suffering, and that becomes like an I insult. Uh, so it's crazy, isn't it? It's also like this, like, cr it's crazy that psychologically we've, we've like put these bo these borders that exist, right? We've like taken it a step further and ourselves just given ourselves like ownership of our country or our area. Like this, you, know, you now stepped into my country. You know, if you ever travel to a border re region, uh, somewhere that's close to the border of two, two countries, uh, you realise how artificial it is. So I remember travelling to Gaza when I was around, I think I was 19 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old. I travelled to Gaza twice actually. And were, you, a, were you a journalist at 18, 19? Yeah, that's around when I started working as a journalist. And there's a town called Rafa, where half of the, t until today, half of the town is in Gaza and half of the town is in Egypt. So the border, and it's a small town. It's like a very small town, yeah. So the border is literally halfway through this town. So imagine that. I like can imagine, you know, whatever. I mean, London's huge, but imagine Uxbridge. Mm. For example, like the the local the local area, you live in one house, and your your cousin or your uncle lives a few streets away, and all of us all of a sudden, you're in different countries. I I saw a documentary or a clip from a documentary in America where they had a bo they had a border, and so um, to get to the other side of the street, like mm. you can see the house, but to cross the street you need a visa. And yeah, so, like, yeah. technically, obviously, I, I assume everybody, you know, was seeing their neighbours and stuff, but mm. technically speaking, you'd need a visa to just cross the road just to see your neighbour. It's insane. One more, Mitch, I, I went to uh, Malaysia once. I never knew this. You might not know this as well. It's really interesting. But the south of Thailand, like the southern five states of Thailand, are majority Muslim. Really? Yeah. They're all Muslim, and they, they, their language is very, very similar to Malay language, and they've got similar customs to Malay. And this it actually used to be a, a, an Islamic uh, kingdom, I believe, called Patani. And then the UK, as usual, got involved. You know how they like to get involved in these things. And basically... Uh, gifted these five states to Thailand. So there's originally an uh, Islamic uh, state there. Oh. And similar things, so, so I travelled from the north of Malaysia over to Thailand. I went across the border and the same thing. Like, And they, I remember at that border there was actually a, a small river, like a very small, quite a s small river. And someone was telling me that, you know, when they wanted to visit their relatives, instead of driving all the way around the motorway and taking their documents and everything, they just go by boat or swim across the river and you're in another country. Mm. And it's a very artificial thing sometimes. Yeah. Like, like, you know, I think any, like I said, any place where you get a border between countries, it's not going to be... Although I have been to one border that was quite um quite a strong contrast and that's when I I, dr I I was living in Mauritania and I was studying there, study Quran there, I improved my Arabic language there. And one day I wanted to go on like a road trip. Like the next country south is Senegal. And that border it's a river as well. When you cross it it's too 
cut off his shot. Really? To completely, it's, you, de- you definitely know that you've left one country and into really? another. So Mauritania, the Mauritania is like a desert, desert land, desert landscape, very dry, very hot. Senegal was like more like jungle, very green, like a kind of jungle landscape. The people were completely looked different. The language was completely, I, I, you know, I found it quite hard to communicate because they speak Wolof and they speak French, but not that much Arabic. But I don't think any English really, or very little English. So it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's, it's very funny. It's very interesting, man. Um, I, I find I've always been interested in psychology more than anything and, and I, I, I find interesting like I said the the psychology behind the people the that um, that then take ownership of their identity to an uh, to a degree of arrogance to a degree mm. of arrogance where it's like no like this is our thing. and I, I understand there's differences in cultures, differences in land and stuff like that. But I, but arrogance is there's no space for arrogance as we know in in our in our religion in in life in general. There's no space for arrogance, and in these kind of things, you sometimes see arrogance pop up uh, most frequently. And I, I I think in any in any situation, arrogance is a tough is a tough like pill to to, to swallow if you're on the other end of it. True, but on the other hand, do you think it's nice to like be? proud of your culture and like you know because you know i think british british culture now is a bit of a like crisis mm. of uh i don't know oh, I don't see. there is a i don't think there's a really very strong british culture anymore and this that, that's why you get things like uh in the uk like racism and xenophobia because the culture seems to be based on we're not like this and we're not like mm. that. Even I remember someone telling me that... Um, SubhanAllah, I've never thought about it like that. Yeah. But you're right. In some ways, rather than being like a proactive culture, perhaps we're reactive. not reactive. Yeah, yeah. And someone was actually telling me that if you look historically... Because if... Think about this here. This is really interesting. Think about different continents. Some continents are geographically separate. So you can see Africa as a piece of land, North America, South America, uh, Austra- Australasia, Australia. But Europe, why is Europe a continent? Because really it's, it's just the end of Asia. Like it, mm. It's not actually uh, detached is it, from Asia. And someone was telling me that historically the, the idea of Europe was presented as like the anti the antithesis to the Ottoman Empire. Mm. So it's, it's not a, you know Islamophobia and racism. It's not a new concept. It's not a new new thing. This is something going back hundreds of years. Like oh, the Ottomans and they're they're like this, they're like that. Allah Alam, I don't know. It's just something interesting. One thing I always I get surprised about when I go to other countries, though, is I, I suppose because I'm born and brought up in London, and so you feel very comfortable at home, right? Mm. And um, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of slack for this, but I just often feel like nothing compares to London when it comes to. Um, Bro, I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> I haven't even said, have even said the thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing of it. I was like, okay, no, the, bro, that, but like, do you know what it is? The public, sense, transport, the public transport system. The public transport system. The public yeah, transport system. Definitely, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the public transport system and stuff. Just because I feel like I know it very well. Yeah. Do you know what it is, bro? When you feel, and I suppose it's just a case of feeling like being raised, being raised somewhere. If I was like dropped in the middle of London, I would know how to get home. I don't know how to get here. I don't know how to get there. Yeah, and I understand even, the system. That's just because you're abroad. Of course, if I know. You, I know. You, if you went and lived in another city I, for I, I, I 20 agree. years, you'd have to get over it. I accept, that it's, subjective. I I accept that it's subjective. But for me, it's still, yeah. it's, still a, it's still a truth for me that subjectively for me, nothing compares because I 
can get rowdy everywhere. And I'm no, no, I like the, I, no. I like the the lion system, and oh, I'm on a met line now, and I've got to get here, and I understand. It's 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 very comfortable in that in that way. Yeah. Um, and I've been in situations abroad where I felt a bit isolated and lost, and like, oh, what do I do? No, that's interesting. Fair enough. Well, I like honestly, I can't disagree more. But yeah. And it's it's funny, like different people just have a. Uh, different uh, preferences i think everyone loves familiarity yeah, yeah yeah so that's true but for me i remember like i i you know i haven't traveled too much in the last couple of years but in my life alhamdulillah i've been really blessed uh, i feel quite blessed to travel to a lot of different countries and i remember going traveling on my own when i was 18 and first of all what I was happy about was like proving people wrong because mm. like how did that I was I was using a wheelchair electric wheelchair to, to get around and that's something you know a lot of people uh, might have thought was not possible for me to do trap imagine that imagine your son was 18 and he's in a wheelchair he said dad I'm traveling around. I, I wouldn't let them would you <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would <laughs> So that was something I was proud of. But honestly, this again, everyone's experience is different. My experience of London, I'm sure it's very dif- different now, even 10 years later. My experience was when you talk about the public trans- transport, my experience of that was discrimination, not, not letting mm. me get on the bus, mm. not helping me to get on the train. And then... I travelled to other countries which in material terms might be referred to as developing countries or third world countries and I found people very helpful, uh, very friendly. You know, sometimes I found a country might be on the surface or a city more difficult to get around but because people were helpful, alhamdulillah it was easier. So... And I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed, I've, 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 I think I've adapted to living in a lot of different places. Mm. The three places I've lived in the longest is apart outside the UK were Palestine, Venezuela and Mauritania. And as such, like you, like you said, it is uncomfortable. It's like conditions that you're not used to, a different language, different culture but that's something I enjoy handle but yeah it is travel is not easy or really. like travel yeah. is not easy I can I, I, I and I I've always I've never I've never enjoyed change I've never enjoyed change so when mm. I, I've always had conversations with people who love traveling and my initial reaction is oh man I don't like traveling I'm, yeah. I'm a home bug I um mm. I, and it's bad I, I I'll accept that it's bad because it's I think not that, bad no no I think I think that there's a lot of advantages to being the type of person who likes to challenge himself with with change right and I like to challenge myself in in, in many ways but I don't mm. think change is one of them and it's, it, it does set you back a bit sometimes I'm not sure even me I think I don't know it's change in some ways yeah it's perhaps it's like time. a natural human human uh, you know we're talking about like uh, uh, nationalities and identity uh, so, so sometimes people ask me like, oh, why why didn't I change my name and I became Muslim? Why aren't you talking to like uh, uh, Junaid Macintyre, Jawad Macintyre, or something? Like oh, we had to. But, <laughs> we we're going with J only here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. So, <laughs> but, oh, but I, you know what I like? Oh, I bet you've never met a, a Muslim called Jody McIntyre before, yeah, isn't it? That's true. So people remember your name Sorry. as well. I remember when I was trying to, uh, when I was when I was looking to get married, my 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 one of my wife's relatives was really upset. And she, oh, he doesn't have a Muslim name. This is a, this is so bad. So she didn't know what to reply to her. So she called me and asked me. I said, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say it in Surah Hud when he was uh, talking about the Prophet Noah alayhi salam and the, sh- the ark came to rest on the mountain? He said, what's the word ala judi? So I said, mashallah, I've got the name of a mountain, mashallah. Wow. <laughs> Fun. 
fantastic. You know, I want to talk about, I want to talk to you about Quran. Please. It's very nice to talk about Quran. You know, when I was driving here to do the interview, I was listening to some Quran. Uh, I was going to mention one ayah I heard that made me a bit sad, as subhanAllah, and one ayah that made me feel really happy, yeah? So the first ayah was in Surah Ahqaf. Uh, and that's it's an ayah about the adab, the punishment of Allah. And he says, subhanAllah, uh, to them miru kulli shayin bi amni rabbiha fa asbahu la yura'a illa masakinuhum kadhalika najzi al-qawm al-mujrimin He says that this adab destroys everything to them miru kulli shayin bi amni rabbiha with by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa asbahu so these people woke up in the morning they couldn't see anything apart from their homes. And when I was here in the ayah, I was driving on the motorway. It was a really nice day this morning. The sun was out and there's like, like nice scenery, like trees and fields and everything. I thought, imagine we woke up tomorrow and there was nothing in the whole earth. You couldn't see one tree or one blade of grass. The only thing you could see was like deserted buildings. SubhanAllah, it made me really sad with that. To think, sometimes, you know, they say you don't appreciate what you have until it's gone. Is that here? So if when we look around, we have to thank Allah for the for the beautiful landscapes we have around us. And then the eye that made you happy inshallah was in the next surah to Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we're going to test you. Until we know which one of you, which one of you humans are the mujahideen, the strugglers, the strivers, was Sabirin and the patient was. Everyone's going through difficulties, everyone's going through secret trials that you don't know about. Some people are really sick and you don't even know, and then one day you found out uh, they had a long term illness. Everyone's got different trials and tribulations, but we should ask Allah, make us from the Sabirin. Allahumma ja'anna min the Sabirin. So I thought that was a nice ayat to remind you. The ayat about um, sabr, and there's so many of them in the Quran, are always ones that make me like pause in my brain because mm. I feel like sabr is one of the things that I struggle with the most, right? And I was talking to the brothers last week and I was saying that I was, um, you know, in Surah uh, Mudathir. Uh, at the beginning of Surah Mudathir, there's kind of um, kind of very short instructions being laid out to us and to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And mm. in the second line, um, kind of the instructions uh, almost come to a close with uh, "Wali Rabbi and, nice. I, and I said that, uh, and to your Lord be pa- and for your Lord be patient. Mm. Um, and actually, I was sp- speaking to the brothers and I was saying that that ayah just made me really upset. Right, mm. and the reason it made me upset is because I thought Allah is saying like, "I'm be patient for your Lord," and and I, I'm not, and it's like that reason that hit me is because it's like I struggle with patience, and it's like Allah commanding you like 
do it for Allah, like be patient, you know. Subhan. And um, why can't I still not put things to the side and just be patient upon things? And um, I was telling brothers that it got me really sad because I said that, you know, I feel like I've, I just feel like I'm always letting myself down. I feel like if there's ever going to be a reason why um, for my kind of torment, it will be because of my lack of sabr. And the brothers really, really, really cheered me up. And what they advised me, and so this is great advice for anybody who is, who also yeah. feels like they're quite, they're not the most patient person, is the brother said, you know what? They said, you're looking at patience in only one way. And so there's so many different types of pa patience. Like, for example, you might be someone who is patient in calamity, uh, but you're not patient when it comes to your time. So right? And, uh, or you're patient when it comes to... Um, uh, money, wealth, like you, 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 you know, you're, you're struggling with your wealth, and you're saying, you know what, Allah is our razak, the wealth will come. You know, alhamdulillah mm. is written for me. But then you're not patient when it comes to the um, when you're waiting on someone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've I realized, and that was the first time someone put it to me like that, and I realized that you know what, the patience that I talk about, the reason I always feel like I'm impatient is because the patience that I'm talking about is the patient the patience that perhaps like happens so regularly right like yeah uh, the 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 the, the ob when you think of patience the obvious one which is oh like he can't sit still or he's yeah, like yeah. he's always in a oh, rush yeah. and that's me right yeah. but I, I i then realized that there's so many other types of patience that perhaps allah has given me patience in other um mm. in other things in other uh, whether it be in the face of calamity or in in in, in struggling for wealth or whatever or it may be and, and uh, for, for those listening like i think it's worth looking at your life and your personality and if you feel like you're an impatient person thinking of the things that you are patient on you'll realize there's so many compartments to patience and so perhaps it's not all bad news if you think oh you know what i'm not patient there obviously something that needs to be needs to be worked on but mm. but don't be so down in the dumps to the point that's where you beautiful that's a very nice advice bro. do you think it's beautiful one of the names of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ashakur ash meaning the grateful. Subhan, something that's so strange to think about that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as grateful, the grateful. So, so even the small actions we can do, Allah loves those actions. He's so grateful. Like it's a, it seems like a strange uh, way to describe it. Mm. But it gives you that feeling that, mashallah, your actions aren't wasted. They're not being wasted, inshallah. Even if you can only do a small amount, Allah will multiply your rewards and Allah is grateful for your ibadah, subhanAllah. 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 Um, you mentioned one of Allah's names and, and um, as you can see, I've got I've had in my hand our freshly guarded game. Right. And the... Um, Let's play. But yeah, the, the, the segue <laughs> I was going to give is that uh, one of the cards actually says like one of Allah's names is... And then it says one of Allah's names. We, like we don't name. need a segue, bro. This <laughs> <is> that. <laughs> I want to play this game with you, man. And um, okay. we've actually got a new series coming out on our YouTube channel, which is going to be um, where our guests and friends, mm. um, of which I consider you both. Um, <laughs> Win. Uh, flurry gets me. Flurry. I'm, I'm great at flurry. Uh, I <laughs> I'm getting the full, the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I said chat. <laughs> Um, we're doing this, new, this, this this series right where like oh, on that set the um, our guests and friends answer some questions and we choose the most clickbaity one and uh, yeah. upload it as a as a nice little kind of piece of inspiration. So it. if you're up for it, we'll have you on the on the chair later for that. But for now, yeah, I'm gonna randomly choose a card. Okay. And uh, uh, there, what are the cards? They're all questions. Yeah, they're basically conversation cards, and some of them are questions. There's no bonuses, like you know. Is there yeah, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, we haven't implemented that in V one. Yeah. <laughs> um, free chocolate, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so essentially, the conversation cards, right? And the mm. conversation cards are a thing that exist. They're not new, but we felt like conversation cards didn't exist that um, have like an Islamic twist on them, and okay. that a try and inspire you to have a better connection with Allah or a stronger connection with Allah, and b allow you to um, ensure Allah. Uh, you know, really increase your love for one another with your loved ones and perhaps even um, fix the ties of kinship, which of course we know is uh, one of the greatest acts in our religion no, to so uphold really kinship. So, um, Especially your parents. Your parents, definitely, definitely. 
It's really important, man. So um, it could be a question that's like a question that I ask you, but it's about me. Or it could be a question that I ask you and it's about you. And there's not really any way of playing this game other than how you think it should be played. But how, I suppose what we'll do is... Um, I'm, I'm really competitive, bro. <laughs> there's, no, there's no winners. Ah, oh, fair. That's, that's, well, there's no losers, only winners. That's, uh, no, 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 bro. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, should I split, I should I split the deck in half? Uh? Should I split the deck in half and you ask me? We'll do like three each. It's okay. Each, I, I trust you. I don't think you... Oh, you don't want to ask me? Fine. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> no, no, no. I thought you meant like... Um, Split the debt to check you haven't, like... No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, split him, bro. Let's go. All yeah. right, oh, fine. Let's split it. And then um, we'll, we'll do three questions each because, um, obviously, we're also in the middle of a podcast right now. Yeah, so we are. We're not going to just take up the whole podcast again. But let me ask you first. I want to know more about you then. Do um, I have to? Okay. You could, you could do it however you want to. You can either, like, ch- choose it randomly or... I'm going to choose one randomly. Here. Like. I've got a question oh, here. I've just chosen... Juicy, fam. <laughs> Some of these are <laughs> deep. Go on. I'm ready, bro. Uh, Jody's laid out the cards on the, de- on the table. He's like choosing the no, one. No, I'm just getting because <laughs> some of them are a bit like, oh. All right, I've got one. For, I, I, I've gone for a different approach to you. I've gone for a random card and asking whatever comes up. <laughs> and the first question card come up. The first card that come up says, <laughs> "Tell me something about your father that you didn't appreciate until you became older." Oh, that is a fan. Who wrote this? Uh, me and Kareem. Bro, that is a fantastic question. Thank you so that much. That is a bit. Oh. Would you purchase these cards? Oh, but I'll buy that one. No, no, Can no. Get <laughs> Just that one card. Get no, you know why? That is a really nice question. I was actually talking to my dad about this issue literally a couple of days ago. And I'll tell you why. Because, you know, like a Facebook Messenger? Mm-hmm. I was on that and it said my dad was online. I don't think he was actually online. It's like when you just, I don't know, it's open in your phone. So I clicked on him, and you know it brings up your 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 message history. Me and my dad never used Facebook Messenger. So the last time I'd spoken to him on Facebook Messenger was around, I think it was 2009. 11 years ago, right? Wow. I was nine, I was 2008, I think, 2008, December, December 2008, so I was 18 years old, wow. yeah, 12 years ago, and the way I was talking to my dad was so like, like, ri- like rude, like, Is just like, like, moody, and ri- like, not rude, but like, not the way I talk to him now, and I was reading the messages and I was like, Jodie, like, what's wrong with you? Like, what is wrong with you? He, you know, he was, he was, I was traveling and he was just like worried about me. Like he was just concerned about me. And I was like, oh, you know, you know, I was like brushing it off out, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. So to answer the question, now that I have children, I understand why he was worried about things. And sometimes, maybe my dad it didn't express it in the best way. That's what I'd say. Maybe he expressed it in a way that was difficult for me to understand as a teenager. But it's, there's, I can't even say one thing because there's so many things. Since becoming a Muslim, Primarily, since becoming a Muslim, I see my parents, particularly my dad, in such a different way to before as a Muslim. And I really, because they're not Muslims, I really hope that that is re- re- reflected to them in the way I talk to them and the way I treat them. In as, in, but that, as in you're hoping that they see that the reason for it was like that change in... They in have to. Well, like, you have to. Your, your character has to change. If you become a Muslim, your character has to improve or like it has to get better. And that is a really interesting question because my relationship with my dad has changed so much from when I was young. I always talk to my wife about this. I always talk about this. We've got such a different relationship now. I would put the primary cause to being a Muslim and Allah knows, knows best. Maybe also 
due to growing up, having children myself, you know, if my, my dad's changed, I've changed. But that is a very interesting question. Because so, so pinpoint one, just what, just one <coughs> aspect that you appreciate now that you didn't appreciate then. And that's actually a really perfect no, example uh, of that conversation that you had with him that day yeah. that you can compare the two types of... I'll tell you what, what I appreciate is why he was angry about certain things mm. why he was upset about wow. certain things that's that's what i appreciate wow wow things, things that at the time i was like oh, you're just getting angry for no reason and now i feel like he you know he had a right to be angry he had the right to be upset that's you know thing. what that, but you know, also the amazing. thing that i've learned from if the thing that i've learned from it is that is that you? You, unfortunately, your your children don't know that, right? So you might have a perfectly valid reason to be upset or angry, but all they see is your reaction. They're not gonna really understand why you're feeling, why you're, mm. why. So if you get really angry, really upset, they'll just think, "Oh, you're a person that gets angry all the time." You know what the reason why what you just said just hit me um, is because I have been getting like frustrated as a career for, for itching. He's got a rash, right? Yeah. Right now, and I'm like, oh, don't itch it. Like, yeah. Obviously, he doesn't understand what I'm saying. I'm not like, I'm not becoming like a monster, but I'm just like, I get like, oh, don't itch your rash. It's going to get worse. Yeah. The reason I'm getting like that is because I don't, I hate the idea of him being in pain and being in like un- discomfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like, oh, you're actually going to get worse. But exactly. how many times when we were younger did our parents say like, don't... Eat? Like one thing I remember always, right, is my dad always saying, being annoyed at me if I go out like without a coat, right? Mm. And now, like when we're going out, I, I need Zachary to be in a coat. It's so... You become your parents. Well, like, you mirror so many things that you... You got annoyed with your parents. So that's the that's the sin of sin of higher, the sin of life, in it. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, okay. Bismillah. I've got a few to choose from here. Yeah, you've laid them out. Uh that's. Uh, what? Um, are you ready? Cha- are you ready, Faisal Chadri? Born ready. Ha, confident, I, overconfident. <laughs> I wrote the cards. I'm hoping I didn't write anything. You know, one of the processes in writing them were that um, Kareem and I, when we were doing it, we would like almost like have to answer each one to like see that it works. That's and cheating, man. Eh? No, That's but, cheating. But you have to see that it like enhances the conversation. And yeah, it gets yeah. you to de- dig deep into your into your soul. Uh, but what, there are one or two questions that we. Um, in V two, will remove, and so I'm perhaps you'll ask me one of those ones. I'll let you know if you do, but I don't think you will. Okay. What are you avoiding lately and oh, wow. why? But I went deep in it. Yeah, you went deep. Yeah, you yeah, know what, yeah. Jody? You shouldn't have got me on there, but... <laughs> it's so amazing that you asked that question because I was thinking about this this morning. Okay. Ajib, innit? Ajib, innit? So, for me, it's a very, very easy answer. Um, it might be cliche one that a lot of people would give, but it's my truth right now. And it's that I... Washing rec- dishes. I recently decided... I've recently come to the realization that what I'm avoiding is joining a sport, right? Okay. Because I, so I, I think you'll relate as you go through fatherhood and stuff, and you're now like you're leaving your twenties. You start thinking like I want to make sure I'm always physically healthy and fit. And when you're younger, you want to be in a sport because you think that you could become the star of that sport. Like yeah, you yeah, could yeah. be the next one out. No, you, no, you know you can't. But yeah, now <laughs> you know you can't. You ju- I, now I want to, for pure reasons, be a part of a sport because, um, because I want to remain fit and healthy. And I think join. And the reason I say I want to join a sport or like a sports club as opposed to going to the, continuing going to the gym is because that sports club gives you accountability. Whereas going to the gym, which I do want to continue doing, but it's mm. my choice. I'm going to go to the gym now. It's like, oh no, I'm feeling a bit tired. I'm not going to go to the gym now. It's a one okay. man sport to stay fit and healthy. But I want to have accountability to stay fit and healthy. And, and the other thing I really enjoy is I enjoy socializing and I don't do it much. I get to do it on this podcast, but I don't outside this podcast really spend time with my friends too much. And my friends get annoyed at me for it. They're like, why, why yeah. is it that we haven't seen you in four or five months? Right, and I, I, think, I think I let myself get distracted by studies, by um, 
a work, sorry, by um, family. And so I think one way of forcing myself to, because I actually have experienced enjoyment through sport. They're, they're endorphins that get released when you sweat, when you work out. I love that. But I'm not giving mm. myself an opportunity to do that enough. And so I think I'm get, myself I'm, get, I'm getting the endorphins in this podcast. Right? That, that's great. So I want to join sport. And I think I've, I've been avoiding, the reason I've been avoiding it is because I don't like that initial... Um, that initial like introduction to like going to like a sports club where it's like mm. whatever it is like uh, and there's this group of people who are already there and they all have their friends there and they know the coach and all that kind of stuff and I'm like a new member it's like going to school for the first time so I think I'm avoiding it for that reason but I want to do I want to start t taking seriously a sport and I don't know which one yet I don't know if it's Tennis, yeah. football, boxing, um, golf, golf, anything. Well, golf is not going to be sweat, is it? But I really do enjoy golf. So I need to find something that I'm going to enjoy, and then I need to apply myself to it. Um, my brother has that with tennis. He's always been involved with tennis since he's been a kid. Okay. And um, he 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 is actually really really good at it. And he got an opportunity to go abroad and, and do like a tennis tour. And my mum didn't let him go. But the point is that he's Most. had that thing. I've not had, I've not had a sport that's like I'm assigned to. Mm. Uh, so. There you go, a bit of a long-winded answer, but I, f I was thinking about it this morning. So yeah, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with one now, and I'm gonna go with a different approach, which is hitting a random. Okay. So, yeah. Would you say that you're the same person in private as you are in public? Ah, oh, interesting. Does, um, I, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Who would be a good person to ask? But when you say private, do you mean on my own or just at home with my family? I suppose we made these questions to be interpreted individually, so what, yeah. whatever you take from me, I guess. Yeah, well, I hear subhanAllah. It's, it's like in terms of your ibadah, your worship, you know, important principle is that we, you know, uh, that we 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 worship Allah whether we're all alone or in front of other people. In terms of my like character, my per per personality, I think I'm the same. I don't know. Maybe you know, people have different interpretations of you, right? So, but I think I'm the same. I try to just be myself, inshallah. Yeah, I think that generally there is obviously an uh, an accepted amount of um, different that person will be uh, with their family and stuff like that out, uh, as opposed to outside. But I guess the the true question here maybe is your morals and actions on the like on like generally are they the same? And and inshallah, I think f most of us would like to say yes. You know, um, someone once told me that they. They hold their wife. They tell their wife to hold them accountable. If you ever see me act, you know this person that I'm talking about mm. is, is quite well known in the public yeah. domain. And so he said to his wife, "If you see me act different at home than I do in public, yeah. tell me because I should." There's definitely a danger. I think, like you know, we, it's really important to remember that anyone that's got a big profile online. Or in the media, or anything, they're they're still just like everyone's a human being, aren't they? Everyone at home has the same um, same issues in their life, same issues with family. So I think, particularly with the the internet and social media, um, you know, it's it's actually in some ways become a lot easier. To become well known and to become mm. yeah definitely to get a big profile, but you know these, these things are just surface level things. I don't think that someone's true character or personality. Their personality is how they are with their friends or their family. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. So yeah, don't 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 presume. I remember what I remember. A funny thing about this. When I used to work as a journalist, a couple of times people met me and they said, oh, 
we we thought you were like a really serious like kind of serious person and always talking about things happening in the world and politics but in real life you're a very uh like laid up or relaxed person i said well you know you don't pursue that's just the way i am isn't it I've, i haven't changed the way i am i hope that i've got uh, as i was m- mentioning before i i think uh, since being a muslim i have changed my personality, I try and be more polite. I think I was, when I was younger, I think I was too arrogant. I think I was a bit arrogant. I, I thought I was so cool and, you know what I mean? So I've tried to, I, I don't, I really don't want to be an arrogant person. I that's, that's not going to get you to gender, mm-hmm. I'm thinking you're the best, you're amazing. That's not going to get you anywhere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, so I think, you know, we're talking about change. In some ways, like you said earlier, you've got to change as you get older. You can't always be the same person. You've got to learn things from life, isn't mm-hmm. it? Learn learn from your experiences, learn from your mistakes. Learn to have, like when you're mentioning about patience, if you were really strug- struggling to get something, and getting frustrated, and then you got it. Oh, okay, next time I just need to be pa- patient, inshallah. I remember something I wanted to talk to you about as well. This is nice. When I was when I was in Mauritania, I know you you you're the interviewer here, but now I'm gonna ask you. No, no, this see, is not see, how, see how you feel. Oh, we don't have to give the answers, Allah, and it's up to you. But when I was in Mauritania, you know Mauritania, Allah, it's a very different uh, place to live. I was living in the in the middle of a desert. We didn't have electricity. You know, even other Mauritanians were surprised. Where really? Because yeah, it's a very, um, very basic living conditions so I could describe it as like a little bit like living in a tent it was made of there was a metal frame you could say that metal poles and then a thick cloth that went over it so a little it wasn't a tent but a little bit like a tent this is what you're living in how long were you living there? I was in that place for most of a year and I was in Mauritania overall for a year and a half. Okay. And um just such a different I, I I remember it now. Sometimes I remember it. I th- think back to it because some things some things about it were really difficult. Like the the diet was very basic. That's something I found quite difficult. The weather was very, very hot, like mid forties or even high forties of Hanla and you're just out in the desert. But some things were really nice. Like, you know, this will make you laugh, yeah? I went to Mauritania in 2015. I came back in 2016. Before I went to Mauritania, I'd never had a smart smartphone, yeah? And w- I remember when I came back, so it's 2016 now, that's, that's not long ago, that's only a few years ago. I'd, well, I, I'd, I'd never had a smartphone in my life. And this is how jahil I was, yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember, um, like, everyone was telling me, you need to get a smartphone, like, like, you can do this, you can do that. I got one, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, like, I'm good with technology, yeah, but I just didn't know how smart the only thing i had was like a laptop like I so basically yeah you know mobile data yeah the internet on your phone i just couldn't comprehend how that worked yeah, yeah? so i got a smartphone and i just put my sim card in there but i didn't have um like a plan like i didn't have data yeah 
and I was driving around. I was like, why isn't the internet working? I thought it was meant to have internet. Like, I didn't know you have to, you know, buy, like, you have to, you have to buy a credit. Um, uh, so I just say, like, why is it, you know, uh, I, I thought you meant to go on the internet. I had yeah. the similar story with the iPads, because yeah. iPads, you get the data one or the SIM one only, or the Wi-Fi only one. Yeah. So I just said, uh, but anyway, this what a year and a half from in Mauritania will do to you. <laughs> so they used to tell me, um, they used to tell me jokes about about Maurit- like Mauritanians living, you know, Mauritanians living in rural areas, coming across things they'd never come across before. So they said there was one uh, older woman living in the desert, and her, I don't know if it was her daughter or her, her son, I think it was her daughter, was going to university in the capital. And then when she came back, she brought her mum a mobile phone and she said listen just just keep this with you get my my son's gonna answer you, you my brother's gonna answer it when i'm in the capital i can call you and her mum did it and she yeah, never, she just was never seen a mobile phone before and then her her so her daughter went back to university she calls her mum and it starts ringing she doesn't know what the, what the hell's going on so it, her her son answered it for her and her daughter says, Oh, Salam alaikum mom, how are you doing? And she said, Wa alaikum salam alaikum and then chucked the phone away. So the son comes around and she's like, Why are you checking the phone away? She said, Oh, I replied to the message, I'm just waiting oh for the game. <laughs> so well, like, that's what a year and a half in Mauritania will do to you. Yeah, so. well. But one thing that I used to I used to like like doing. You've got your cards here, right? right. I used to like with some of my friends, Mauritan, other Mauritanian brothers who were studying. We were all studying Quran or Fiqh or Arabic grammar, and I liked like giving them like quizzes about the Quran. So I, when I was reading Quran and revising Quran, I'd think of some questions and then ask it to them. So I'll give you some examples. Yep. You can see if you can get the answer, or oh, I can I'm, give. I'm going to do very bad at no, this. No, no, no let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. You know, some of them are like trick questions. Yeah. Fine. fine. So I'll give you one one question. Tell me two surahs in the Quran where the name of the surah is not mentioned in the surah. Um. Okay. My, I was initially going to go with, uh, my initial reaction was going to be uh, Surah Insan, which would be a really bad answer because... Because, do you know why though? Because I know that some people call it Surah Dahar. And so I was like, oh, oh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Both, both words in it. But so, that, that's a good uh, yeah. example of an incorrect answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I said I was going to say, I was going to yeah, give that. So yeah. I did that was wrong. So let me no, give but you, it's a good question. Marshall. It's a good question. Um, okay. Um... So two surahs where the name of a surah is not mentioned at surah all. Ikhlas. Masha'Allah. Um. Surah Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. The name of a surah Ikhlas isn't mentioned. The other one. Can he do it? Yeah, I think, inshallah, if you give me a second. <laughs> um. I'm running. I'm. I'm currently running through a list in my head. It's okay. You've got time, inshallah. You know, just it's like a nice thing to like pass the time because we're all just studying. You know, we didn't have many distractions like, like uh, internet or TV. But I used to like doing this. Oh, I think I might have one. Go Wait, for it. Um, Oh no, no! So I went through the surah. It's got, it's got hit in it. Um, all right, let's just go through. Let's go through. This is going to be great for the podcast. But let's just go through a few minutes of silence while the guests it's also okay. try to think of some. Should I? Yeah. It's okay. Should I do another question? No, I, I, no? I, I, I'm, I think I'm close. Okay. I think you're far, bro. Really? Is it hard? 
Think of another one, you think. Well, there's 114 serials, so it's one of them. Are there? <laughs> 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 is, but is there is there is there a few that don't have their name in it? Is there quite a few? Um, there's the, the two that I'm thinking of. Oh, right. uh, the two like good answers. So there are some that are like debatable. Oh, um, Marshall, you deserve a prize if you no, get this. No, 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 oh no, not that yeah. one. But not that one. Um. Your viewers are going to love this answer, inshallah. Okay, um, well, like, yeah, 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 right, go and give it to me. Maybe yeah. I wouldn't have got it. The answer is Surah Fatiha. Oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you have me on your podcast, mate. Wow. <laughs> Surah wow. Fatiha, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. You know, another one, I did an, another question. Was there, was there other surahs? What, you there, the there, there are surahs that, um, there are surahs, for example, uh, if you say that surah taqweer, the word taqweer isn't mentioned, but the first ayah says, uh, so and yeah, kuwirat like and taqweer is from the same root. Fine. So they're like debatable ones. What about surah tahrim? Tahrim hal, uh, uh uh, so it's related, yeah, for example. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah? Uh, another, another question I did, which I did this one in Mauritania. I'm liking this. And no one could get this one. Okay. No, these are all oh, fathers of Quran, no one could get But Then I've a, got no chance. No, I'll tell you the answer, but it's a bit of a Fine. trick question. Okay. I said to them, tell me, tell me a place in the Quran. Where there are three of the letter ba, so three letter bas okay. in a row with nothing in between them. Three letter ba, as in the word the, begins with ba. No, the, so three words where. No, three letters. Oh wow. Ba, three bas. I'll give you one. Ba, ba bila no, ba bila harut wa marut na in Surah Baqarah. That's not ba bi na. But, um, but it's a bit of a trick question. The answer, sorry, I've. There we go. The if it's a trick, but so if you ask a trick question, you're saying that. Uh, don't don't give it to me, to me just yet. Let the viewers have a think as well. Okay. Um, and then maybe maybe while they're listening, they can write in the comments right now and then pause it right in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but when you say it's a trick question, so the are you saying that the answer is not in just trying to scan your brain? And fine, is it like mm. okay? Should I? Am I thinking the wrong way? What I'm saying is that the if I give a, I think this one we should give the answer, inshallah. Oh, fine. And then we'll do one more question, and the last one we can leave it without the answer. Oh, okay. Well, you tell me off. Know. You tell me off camera, though, yeah. I might do. Okay. Depends okay. what's in it for me, but fine. but the three, the one with the three bears. Is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Habbaba ilaykum al iman. He says, Habbaba ilaykum al iman. So there's a ba and then there's a ba with a shadda. Oh, okay. So a shadda yeah. is a double letter. Yeah, of course. So it's not written as three bars. So but I was thinking along the lines of that, though. I yeah. was thinking along, yeah. along the lines of like... I'll tell you one more question. Because you said three bars in a row, so I knew it would be something like a shadda or something. But yeah. Well, no, 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 no. I'll give you one I more... I forgot already. Habbaba ilaykum al iman. Habbaba ilaykum al iman. Al iman. I'll give you one more, Fine. which is a really, really nice one. Fine. I like this question. Sure. You ready, yeah? I'm ready. Okay. There's a surah in the Quran that has two of the same ayahs mm -hmm. as Surah Baqarah in the same place. Two of the same ayahs in the same place in the surah. For example, if Ayah 10 from Surah Baqarah was the same as 
I attend from another surah. Oh, wow. Okay? So it's one surah, but it's got two ayahs. And two exact same ayahs in the exact same place that they are in Surah Baqarah. I don't know. Okay, so I don't know Surah Baqarah by heart. So I'll, I'll only I'll only be able to hear You don't have to know the whole surah. But right. are they are they are, is it potentially like some of the famous ayats from Surah Baqarah? Is that, is that is it, you could get well, you could get it, but it's quite tricky. Um, it's quite tricky, but it, it, oh, is it That's one of them. Okay. So, so then, so so for our viewers, inshallah, you know, you know what I like about these questions, yeah. yeah. It makes you look at the Quran, yeah. look at the Mus'haf. Like, you know, it's just nice, mashallah, to read the Quran, reflect on the Quran. Although, I, I really think, like, you know, your time in your life, you give your time to different things, right? So. Giving your time to Quran, fan, fantas, fantastic, inshallah. Yeah. I think we won't regret it, inshallah. Won't yeah, we definitely. Pass away, we'll think, how did I at least. I gave some of my time to Quran. Okay, uh, Alif Lam Meme. Yeah. And you're gonna have to give me the second one. Okay. Do you think I would get it if I thought about it? I don't know. I think not right now. It might Fine. take a bit Fine. of time. Okay, go ahead. So I give you. I yeah, appreciate so. your confidence, me. Jazakallah khairan. Well, I think you get it. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can get it, inshallah. No, 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 good. Should I give the answer? Yeah, give the answer. Or should we leave it? No, 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 no. Uh, really? Actually, leaving it might be. No, no, give the answer. Let's leave the next question. You said you got one question that we'll leave, right? Okay. Um, I feel. Okay. Yeah, give this one. Because we started answering it. Okay. I'll give this one. The next one's a big question. Fine. That's good. We'll have, big, we'll have a lot of comments. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great for the algorithm. Oh, uh, this one, uh, the next one. Oh, bro, bro. The next one's going to get the algorithm popping. <laughs> Real sure. Okay. So the answer to this one no. is Surah Luqman. Okay. Surah Luqman. So yeah. ayah number one of Surah Luqman is Alif Lam Mim. Uh -huh. Same as ayah number one sure. of Surah Baqarah. And ayah number five of Surah Baqarah. Okay. That fifth ayah is the same as ayah number five. I wouldn't have got that. Subhanallah. It's powerful. Is that, is Sorry, these questions really make you think. I think I said that ayah wrong. Okay. So that's ayah number five. So that's ayah number five. And the ayah number five. I'm sure the command is the same. Wow. These are good questions. I know they're really making you think. All right, let's go with the last question. Um, and we said we'd do three of these cards each. So let's do uh, the last question. And then we've got one more card left for you. Okay. And two more left for me. Uh, but we could just do yours. So um, let's go with that question. Get it in the comments. Okay, so the last question, inshallah, which is open for everyone to try and search in the Quran and find the answers, inshallah, is try to find, I think, I think, someone has to double check, I think it's 48 times that the name Ar-Rahman is mentioned in the Qur'an. Try to find all the places where the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, is mentioned. That's a good one. It's a good one. There's yeah, so yeah. Is a I'm surprised it's only 48 because I, as soon as you said that, I thought of a couple. That's good, Masha. You but can comment. I can comment. I'll, I'll give you a little comment in there. Fine. I'll add one or two. Ar Rahman Rahim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Ar Rahman, beginning of Surah Rahman. Correct. 
uh, in uh, just about a, uh, I can't remember the surah. I think surah Mulk. Naba. No, but what about no surah Mulk second page? Do uh, Do Nir Rahman. Yeah. In the ayah. Yeah. Um, and then the, the ayah straight after it again has a Rahman in it. We just, just, just given five. Yeah, yeah. Only forty-two left. No. Only forty-three left. <laughs> You can cut it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, right, let's go for question. Let's go yeah. for question. I'm gonna give you. My, I'm gonna give you the final question. Okay. You ready for it? Yeah. Random, random card. Wow. Well, especially considering what we were talking about. Let me show it to the viewers before I show it to the to the you and put it on this camera. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Wow, that's good. I've never done that before. I could increase. I could improve my relationship with the Quran by. It's a very nice question. That's a very important question. A very nice question. Very apt. So how I could improve my relationship with the Quran? So. Wallahi, but there's so much. There's so much I need to do. I want to. I want to. Increase the amount of Quran I re- read each day, and to be more consistent. So I want to make it like a consist cons- consistent amount, meaning that I do it every day, inshallah, and a bit more than I'm read now, a bit a bit larger amount than I read now. I want to find parts of the Quran that I don't understand the meaning, and rather than just you know. Leaving it, I, I want to look it up, find out the meaning of those eyes. You know, this is a guidance for our life from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, we should find out what it means, inshallah. Even if there's one word we don't understand or one eye we don't understand, why not uh, look it up? And if there's a lot we don't understand, then at least take it one step at a time one eye at a time, one word at a time. Another thing I really want to do in the near future, inshallah, which is not like a essential, it's just something that I've, you know, something I really want to do personally, is to learn the different qira'at. Mm. That's something quite difficult, mm. and people should always begin with one qira'a, so one uh, uh, mode of recitation. Most people learn Hafs, which is a, uh, a very c- common one in the world today. Mm. But me personally, I really want to learn the different qira'at and the, the ahkam, the rules, the tajweed. Alhamdulillah, I know, I know uh, tajweed rules for hafs, but I want to learn 10 qira'at, inshallah. inshallah. Um, I want to like, you know, like at the beginning of the interview, we were talking about some eyes from the Qur'an, I want to reflect on the Qur'an more and not just read it, read it. I want to think about it and uh, apply the eyes to my life and just, it's comforting, it just makes you think about the world. So I want to reflect on the Qur'an more and there's more things I want to do in each other. I like Qur'an, I, I wish it was number one in our lives. I, like, I really, really wish is number one in my life, in our lives, all of our lives. Now, at the moment, what I do now for work is I teach people Quran, mashallah, I'm a Quran teacher. And you know, like, um, different jobs have unfortunate, I don't know, is it unfortunate, but it's like different uh, levels of pre- prestige, right? Because we generally, a lot of us judge people's success on like material success or financial success. So I've done a few, couple of different jobs in my life. I've worked as a journalist for a number of years. I've worked as an uh, English teacher. Now I'm working as a Quran teacher. But I love working as a Quran teacher. And I'm really proud of it. I really enjoy it. And the reward, uh, you know, sometimes there's really rewarding things that ha- hap- happen. Some some of my students are 
in their thirties or older. I had one student in his thirties who um was starting from scratch. So he's born a Muslim but he'd never ever ever learn how to read the Quran. So Alif Bata from the beginning and he was studying with me every day. Staying a half an hour lesson every day, and after a couple of months, I think about two months, we got into reading from the Mus'haf. And I remember we, we did a lesson, and he, you know, we were re you know, slowly, but he was reading from the Mus'haf. And at the end of the lesson, he said, so, like, it was kind of like smiling. He said, Oh, can I say, like, technically, that I'm reading Quran. I say it's not technically you are reading yeah, Quran, Mashallah. Yeah. I started crying because he said my whole life I've I've never been able to read Quran. So moments like that, Wallahi, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me. Mm. And like teaching children Quran, you think that these short surahs that you're teach teaching them, like if you're teaching them. For the first time, they're going to learn it for the first time. Or, 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 inna a'atayna qalqawta. That they could be reading those surahs for the rest of their lives, inshallah, and teaching their children. Do you know, that's a... Wallah, I love teaching Qur'an, but I wish that myself, all of us, put the Qur'an number one in our lives, sure. because it's an amazing... A uh, gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an amazing book, and you know, like I said, it, it, if you dedicate yourself, it can take up so much of your time. Mm -hmm. I always think about the last 10 years of my life, the amount of time I've spent trying to memorize this book and trying to learn Arabic so I understand what it means and trying to, you know. Uh, um, yeah, like memorize the ayahs. Alhamdulillah, it's a lot of time that you think I'm glad that I put that time into Quran, mashallah. And, and also, I feel like I genuinely feel like I know people say this, but I'm being honest that I've got so long to such a long way to go. That, that's how I always look at it. Like, like, that's you then, I don't know about no, no, but, people but, like no, <laughs> but you know, like, people, uh, uh, like, <laughs> I know what you mean, but uh, I'm being serious. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, oh, what do they call it? I'm not trying to say... Like fake humanity. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even, I don't want it to be fake humanity. I'm just saying, I'm sure everyone sees it like that. that that's the reality, is that everyone mm -hmm. look at look at themselves and say I've got a long way to go because we, uh, we have all got a long way to go but you know subhanAllah sometimes this is in oh, sorry. sorry no that's fine it's not, I have a it has a mind of its own sometimes it's not sometimes sometimes um I get like um sometimes I get recommended sh students so some of my students will recommend other people to study Quran. And sometimes people say, oh, I want to start a Quran lessons, but I want to, you know, I want to get to a certain level. But I always say, you know, uh, we're not judgmental of each other as Muslims. Like, wallahi, a few years ago, I didn't know Alif Bata. A, f a few years ago, I was a Muslim. I didn't know Alif Bata. I didn't know how to read Quran. And I remember when I just become a Muslim, I was living in the, I went to Vene Venezuela in South America for around nine months. And I remember seeing people read from the Mus'haf, like a normal Arabic Mus'haf, in the Masjid. I remember thinking, I'd love to be able to. I used to know that as well. Yeah, I'd love to be able to just pick up a Quran and read it. So, another really, this is something I wanted to say to you. A really common question you get is how long will it, if I want to memorize the whole Quran, how long will it take? Or how long did it take you to memorize the Quran? But 
this what this what we should say. How long is it gonna take us to start memorizing the Quran? Mm. Don't worry about how long to you know. It's it's a life journey, isn't it? Don't worry about the end. Worry about the start. We can all start, Masha. We can all start. Subhanallah, Jody, it's been so inspiring having you on, man. Just having a lovely chat, and um, you know, you've left us with uh, the last conversation uh, being about the Quran and and about memorizing and and like you say, um, it's never too late. So if anybody is listening to this and hasn't even started reading or hasn't started um, memorizing, uh, it's never too late. Anyone can memorize Quran. It's just about getting getting the the method that, or the strategy that works for you but all of the methods have the same principle which is repetition and mm. revision mm. just read it as much as you can Barakallahu so. feekum uh, Jody Jazakallahu yeah. for joining us I really really appreciate it like, it's yeah. been amazing having you on and um, inshallah you come back soon it was really nice to meet you bro Jazakallahu uh, you know, I hope we can we can be friends and brothers in this hand, inshallah. Inshallah. Definitely. It's lovely to come, like, uh, you know, to hang out, to have a chat, you know. To eat some of my Lindor chocolates. Yeah, they were delicious. It's a good start. It's a good start, bro. It's a good start, bro. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you to everyone listening, and we'll see you again next week, inshallah. Goodbye, everyone. Take care of yourself, inshallah.